Well, joining me in the studio is Conservative MP Mark Reckless, who sits on the Home Affairs Committee and down the line in his first interview since the verdict, Abu Hamza's lawyer, Alan Jones QC. Alan Jones QC, um, you're the man who represents Abu Hamza. Um, what's been his reaction tonight to this verdict? Oh, well, I, ha I haven't spoken to him uh, today, today at all. Um, I, I think he was expecting this. In fact, we were all expecting it. I think it's been clear since the European Court of Human Rights made its decision in April that it was final, and nobody expected the Home Office uh, to conduct what we, th we, th we thought were the necessary medical tests to determine whether he was fit to be extradited. You can't seriously then have thought you were going to succeed with today's appeal. It was, in, in effect, a delaying tactic. No, no, it wasn't a delaying tactic. We had a consultant psychiatrist who gave his opinion to the Home Office on the 10th of August of this year that there had been a deterioration in Abu Hanza's mental condition attributable to sleep deprivation for eight years. Uh, he's been kept in conditions of the utmost severity in Belmarsh Prison with very severe disabilities. And his uh, recommendation was that there should be an MRI scan, his recommendation given on the 10th of August, which the Home Office ignored. But I, I don't think those are the main points. I'd like to deal with the question of delay, which you've, uh, which you've been discussing. Uh, and, of course, there has been formidable delay. The point which has not been made and ought to be made loudly and clearly is that Abu Hamza ought to have been tried in this jurisdiction for the crimes alleged we'll, against him. We'll come to that, uh, Mr Jones. Uh, but, you know, we've got the Lord Chief Justice saying now that your achievement here, the eight years uh, of delay, um, are a source of real fury to him. Surely now, you know, we all have to accept the law here has been made to look like an ass. Oh, there are very serious faults in the way extradition proceedings are handled. Um, but, but don't call it an achievement to delay for eight years. The delay has been built in by uh, Abu Hamza serving a sentence of imprisonment and criminal proceedings brought in this country in 2004. And that caused the extradition proceedings to be interrupted until 2007. The proceedings themselves took place between 2007 and June of 2008. And since then, the delays have been caused in the European Court of Human Rights, where Abu Hamza's complaint was held admissible in part, as were those of the other defendants. And it was treated with enormous significance and importance by the European Court of Human Rights until the appeal was dismissed in this year. So the delays are endemic in the extradition process. Of course, they're serious. How we sort them out in Europe, I don't know. That court is overburdened with work. But the history of delays is a consequence of using extradition proceedings instead of trying the matters as they should have been tried in this jurisdiction. Mr Jones, uh, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to that and the question mm. of the European Court. Stay with us, please. Uh, I'll just turn to now to, to Mark Reckless MP. You sit on the Home Affairs Select Committee. You too have met the man, Abu Hamza. Uh, you met him in prison. Uh, what's your reaction to seeing him arrive, I think, at Mildenhall just now uh, to get on a plane to the United States? Well, like I think most people in the country, at last. I mean, it's taken such a long time. It's been a, a lot of money, including taxpayers' money, spent. And finally, this extradition is now, is now going ahead. But the delays inherent in this process are because we have a European Convention on Human Rights that's incorporated for over a decade into our domestic law. Our own courts, to the highest level, rule on that and say, whether it's Abu Qatada or Abu Hamza, that they can be deported, yet we then wait for this separate process for the Strasbourg court to rule on something that our own courts have already determined on the basis of that international law. Do you law. think, in, in, the, in the detail of today's court judgment, there is some strengthening, actually, of the position of British courts? Uh, absolutely. I mean, MPs such as myself and, and Dominic Raab, we have, we have argued for some time that it is entirely lawful for the government to proceed with deporting either Abu Hamza or Abu Qatada, put them on their plane. Their lawyers may go to the High Court, and as we've seen, within a, a, a week or two, the High Court's upheld previous domestic decisions. And what I think we've got in this judgment is the strongest indication yet from the UK judiciary that it is their decision that matters. And when the government, Dominic Grieve or Theresa May, when they say that a Rule 30 39 injunction from Strasbourg prevents the deportation. Actually, we see our judges saying, no, it's not an injunction, it's only an indication. And all it does is indicate no. under the rules of the Strasbourg court if that, that it's not desirable. If that interpretation is right, there are other people sitting in British jails who will probably be quite swiftly on a plane themselves, aren't there? They could be. I believe we have the clearest judicial indication that they could be. And as I and others have been arguing for a long time, the government just needs to test that law 
move to put those people on a plane. There may be a, a quick judicial review in the, in, in the High Court, but on the basis of what the judges in this judgment have been saying, and other judges more senior sort of extra judicially, that is UK judgments that matter, and we shouldn't be waiting years and years to wait for Strasbourg to make its own decision. Mr Jones? Well, I agree with Mr. Reckless that it's good that British judges are asserting themselves over these important international matters. But what I'd like to hear Mr. Reckless discuss is, is why British judges should not be pronouncing upon the merits of the allegations made against people like Abu Hamza and all the others whose cases have finished today. In every case, the allegations against those people could have been tried in this country where the judicial qualities which Mr Reckless wants to see brought to bear could be applied in every one of those cases, which is where the people are found, it's where they were arrested, it's where many of them are arrested, where their homes are, where their families are, where their defence witnesses are. And Mr. I would like to see a self-assertion by the UK Criminal Justice Act system over crimes of an international character which could be tried in this jurisdiction <clears throat> and where common sense dictates and the factors relevant to the case where the evidence is demonstrate should be tried in this jurisdiction. And it is the failure to apply any sensible test, any objective assessment as to where one case should be tried here or the United States but, but, which Mr. has resulted in these delays. Mr. Mr. Jones, let me just ask uh, Mark Reckless here in the studio. Uh, the, the European Court itself has been, has been uh, criticised over the, the, its, own, its own sort of d delay and the number of cases it, uh, it has in backlog. But the British court system you know, hasn't been particularly effective here either, has it? Mm. Well, some of the delay for Abu Hamza was because he was, was con convicted domestically and was serving that sentence back in 2007, 2008. I think our courts here took about a, a year. Perhaps there are some arguments we could change the statutory appeals and the way they interact with uh, judicial review. But it was only a year of that process that were our courts, and now the last week or two, that have been the UK courts. The far bigger delay has been Europe. And what we see in this judgment is we really shouldn't and don't need to wait for Strasbourg. We can make our own decisions, and our government should follow our courts here. Mark Wickless, thank you very much. Alan Jones, QC, down the line from Tunbridge Wells. Thank you. And